Now, Sam asked me to talk selectively on the second section on type 2 diabetes. And I believe there's a reason. Maybe some of us have diabetes. 33% of the population in the United States are pre-diabetic, meaning more than 100 million Americans are pre-diabetic. 10% of the population is diabetic, meaning about 35 million Americans are diabetic. And that has tremendous ramifications medically, socially, and financially. So we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. Uh, I, I need my remote. You see my remote somewhere? Oh, OK, good, good. Oh, sorry. OK. 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 There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. The majority of diabetics is type 2, only 5% being type 1. Type 1 diabetics tend to be younger and thinner. Type 2 is of adult onset. They tend to be middle-aged men and women with central obesity. Type 1 is insulin dependent. Without in exogenous insulin, they die. Type 2 diabetics have too much circulating insulin, except the insulin cannot do what it is supposed to. Type 1 is due to autoimmune destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas that secrete insulin. Type 2 is due to unhealthy lifestyle. Type 1 is also associated with cow milk intake. More and more studies coming out of New Zealand identify a link between A1 beta casein, which is the main protein in cow milk, and type 1 diabetes. Epidemiologically, the heavier the consumption of cow milk a country has, the higher the incidence of diabetes type 1 in that country. Thus, Scandinavian countries incidence of type 1 diabetes is much higher than Japan and Venezuela. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommend infant less than one year of age not be fed with cow milk. My recommendation to you is stop drinking cow milk whatever your age. <laughs> Why? Not only the immune substances from cow milk, which is a different species that may mess up your or confuse your immune system, cow milk has a bunch of hormones, antibiotics, and steroids that is detrimental to your health, known to be sources of infection, cancer, and allergy. There's a reason I talk about cow milk when we come to the best diet you know. Now, type 2 diabetic is due to unhealthy lifestyle. It doesn't mean that there is no hereditary component at all. In fact, if your daddy or mommy or brothers or sister have type 2 diabetes, your chances of having diabetes is a little higher. But again, genes by themselves do not determine disease. Gene functions by being activated and expressed. It is like a bullet in the gun. Heredity loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. And that environment is unhealthy lifestyle. But most of the type 2 diabetes is not related to heredity or genes. It's lifestyle.
Type 2 diabetes is easily diagnosable. All it takes is a blood test. Hemoglobin A1c is more accurate and informative than fasting blood sugar. When hemoglobin A1c is greater than 6.4, the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is made. When it is between 5.9 to 6.4, it is pre-diabetic. To understand type 2 diabetes and learn to reverse it, we need to understand what causes it. I want you to remember the term insulin resistance, which is the main pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes. Our body, especially our brain and skeletal muscle, require energy to function all the time when we are mentally and physically active. Glucose is the main source of energy or fuel in the human race, not protein, not fat. When we ingest carbohydrate, it becomes glucose in our bloodstream. The glucose requires insulin to carry it into the cells of our brain and skeletal muscle. Inside, it goes through a biochemical pathway called Krebs cycle to be converted into energy in the form of ATP, so-called adenosine triphosphate. If you know what I'm talking about, just remember, glucose in the bloodstream is not energy. It has to be go into a cell to be converted into energy. Now, insulin has two arms. One arm is oh, glucose in order to go into a cell has to go through a gate called insulin receptors on the surface of the cell. So insulin has two arms. One arm is to open the gate of insulin receptor. The other arm is to put the glucose inside the cell. When we habitually eat out in McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger King, Panda Express, or have standard American diet at home, the saturated fats and trans fats that we ingest would get accumulated and block the insulin receptors. Now imagine, this wall is the surface of a cell. And these doors are some of the insulin receptors. I am the insulin. This is the glucose, a molecule of glucose. And I want to carry this molecule of glucose into the cell so it can become energy. But now I cannot open it because the door is sealed off by fat. That is insulin resistance. The cell is now resistant to insulin. There is a study in University of Kentucky. They put a bunch of young athletic men on high-fat diet for two weeks. At the end of these two weeks, they become pre-diabetic. And they put another bunch of young athletic men on high-sugar diet. At the end of two weeks, nothing happened. They are healthy. The blood sugar is normal. What does it tell you? It is not the sugar. It is the fat especially the saturated fat. The reason I want you to understand it, because if you are diabetic, you know how to reverse it. By eliminating all the saturated fat, by exercising religiously every day to burn off the, in, the fat which is now blocking, sealing off the gate of insulin receptors. And now the glucose cannot go into the cells 
it gets dumped back to the bloodstream. The pancreas sense that the concentration of glucose is still too high. Will continue to secrete insulin, trying to overcome the resistance. As a result, the concentration of both insulin and glucose is high in the bloodstream. When the concentration of glucose is too high for a long period of time, it causes damage in the inner lining. Of blood vessels throughout the bodies, the damage is set up for those substances to gather on the site. The saturated fats, the cholesterol, the platelets, white blood cells with all the immune and inflammatory factors, proteins, C-reactive proteins, and calcium, they group together to form. Plugs all over the vasculature. So, when the insulin, when there's too much insulin circulating in the bloodstream, it does more harm to your body. Too much circulating insulin affects negatively all cells in the body. It causes low-grade inflammation throughout the body, and it is a common denominator for conditions that causes metabolic syndrome. Now, what is metabolic syndrome? Central obesity, high triglyceride, no low HDL, hypertension, and pre-diabetes. If you have three. Out of these five, you are diagnosed as having metabolic syndrome. Every single one of these is an independent risk factor for developing developing cardiovascular disease. If there you have a bunch of them, it multiplies the risk. And so, if you see somebody walking around with a tummy, Central obesity. Chances are, he either has hypertension, or developing hypertension, or at risk of developing hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. These clusters of conditions, they tend to cluster together, and. The mediator is insulin resistance. Therefore, metabolic syndrome is also called insulin resistance syndrome. Pre-diabetics have no symptoms. Early stage of diabetes usually have no symptoms. When you have symptoms. The disease is already significantly advanced, and the symptoms include excessive thirst, appetite, excessive urination, irritability, fatigue, weight loss, blur vision. Understand this: if you have blur vision, it indicates that diabetes has already caused an organ disease in the retina of, retina of your eyes. The reason diabetes is so undesirable, so detrimental to our health, because it affects the whole vasculature. But selectively, there are five organs who are more prone to the disease by insulin: the brain, the heart, the kidney, the eyes, and lower extremities. The complication of diabetes can be acute, can be chronic. Acute complication includes diabetic ketoacidosis. It usually occurs in type one diabetics. In the absence of insulin, 
The body cannot use glucose as fuel. It turns to fat burning. The byproduct is ketone. Ketone is acidic. When there is too much ketone in the bloodstream, the blood becomes too acidic and it can be life-threatening. Hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome occur in type 2 diabetes. The concentration of glucose gets too high, causing the molarity of the bloodstream too high, with resultant severe dehydration. In fact, your body tries so desperately to dilute the high concentration of, of, of glucose. It draws even fluid from the brain. It is a dangerous situation. But the most common complication, paradoxically, is hypoglycemia. Diabetic patient loses the ability to regulate and maintain sugar in a normal range. It gets easily either too high or too low. Now, being too low is more dangerous than being too high because it could cause permanent brain damage. It causes diabetic coma. Diabetics affects all blood vessels, big and small. The big one include the coronary artery in your heart, predisposing to a heart attack, carotid artery in your neck, predisposing to stroke, big vessels in the lower extremities, predisposed to disease of, of the limb, ending up on amputation. Now, chronic complication of diabetes due to microangiopathy. Now, forget about all these medical terms, diabetic cardiomyopathy, nephropathy, and retinopathy, neuropathy, and encephalopathy. Remember I told you five organs more prone to disease by diabetes. The heart, the brain, the kidney, the eye, and the lower extremities and small blood vessels inside these organs are diseased. And all these organs are dysfunctional. And so diabetes predisposes you to getting a stroke and a heart attack. And I've mentioned earlier, diabetes is coronary heart disease equivalent. You don't need to look at a picture of normal retina of your eyes to know or to appreciate this is very abnormal. The blood vessel is distorted and chaotic. Dead tissue here and there everywhere. Diabetes is the number, number one cause of blindness in the world. You go to the dialysis center and take a peek. They are either diabetic or hypertensive or both. Diabetes is a major source, major cause of renal dysfunction, end-stage kidney disease leading to dialysis. And diabetes, the number one cause of amputation it causes, plus they have, it affects the nerve as well. So when you're diabetic, you get burned in your, in your toes and you don't even feel it. You have no sensation. And the lack of blood supply eventually causes gangrenous toe, ending, ending up with amputation. So if you have diabetes uh, also, Diabetes weak, weaken our immune system, predisposing us to infection, especially pneumonia, bronchitis, and periodontal diseases. So what do you have?
to look forward to if you have diabetes. Amputation, dialysis, heart attack, stroke, pneumonia, impotence, and blindness. Now, if these are not enough to scare you, maybe this will draw your attention. Diabetic life expectancy is 20 years shorter for type 1 and 10 years shorter for type 2. But don't say, I'm glad I, I'm type 2 instead of type 1, <laughs> because 10 years of life is invaluable. If you don't change your direction, you're likely to end up where you are heading, said an ancient philosopher. If you have diabetes, you don't change the course, you don't control it, you don't reverse it. You're going to end up with premature cardiovascular disease with resultant premature cardiac death. So it's important to reverse or control diabetes. There are two types of medications used to control diabetes. One is to make cells more sensitive to insulin, therefore reduce insulin resistance, such as metformin. The second type is to stimulate the pancreas to secrete more insulin to overcome the resistance, such as sulfonylurea. Understandably, the first type is more efficacious than the second type. But all medications have side effects. When you see a doctor who diagnosed type 2 diabetes, he may or may not have time to talk to you about lifestyle modifications importance. He is quick to start you on metformin. Now for those of you, I'm not sure, who are on metformin, don't get me wrong. It is fair to say that metformin has a long track record it is relatively safe unless you have kidney disease predisposing to lactic acidosis or you are medica cardiac medication predisposing to adverse drug-drug interaction side effects. But the other diabetic med medication is not so safe. Even back in 2006, Avendil, a diabetic medication, was pulled out of the market because it increases heart attack by 41% and increases the risk of cardiac death by 64%. As recent as 2016, five diabetic medications were identified to increase the risk of congestive heart failure. Now, paradoxically, we use medications to control diabetes to cut down or avoid cardiovascular complications. But the side effects of this diabetic medication causes cardiovascular complication worse than the diabetes itself. So it is time to wake up. Instead of depending on medications to control your diabetes, you use lifestyle new start to reverse it. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperature, temperance, air, rest, trust in God. We've talked about the importance of exercise. Wima in Colfax, California, which is about an hour north of Sacramento, on your way to Lake Tahoe, is where new start is originated. It has a beautiful campus, lovely and pe peaceful. There is hiking trails as long as five miles. You'll be doing exercise every day, walking on these trails every day, up to five miles or more. And in the kitchens, you will be taught to prepare vegan food deliciously. 
You listen to lecture every day to understand these chronic diseases and how to reverse it with new start. When you graduate from this boot camp at the end of the section, which is three weeks, you feel like a real person, a new person. You're off all these diabetic medications, your blood sugar is normal. But unless you stick to the principles you learn at Weimar and practice the rest of your life, you're wasting your time and money. Those of you who have the commitments, you who have the discipline and incentive, whether you start this lifestyle modification at Wima or at home, you're going to be successful. So commitment, lifestyle changes, long term, not just three weeks. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you how to reverse diabetes. At Wima, they put you fasting at the beginning for three days. Two, actually, two and a half days. If you do it at home, I recommend you fast for one day. Because over there, you are under supervision. At home, unless you have a partner who checks your blood sugar periodically. It's safe to just do it on one day. During this period of time, your body undergoes some transformation. Your taste, bud, your taste buds forget the taste of all the junk foods that you loved to eat before. <laughs> Replaced by vegan diet. And you cut down your meals from three to two. Now at Wima, you have your breakfast, breakfast at 7, 7 a.m and your second meal at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. After that, you eat nothing until the following morning, as if you were going through a mini fasting on a daily basis. It works quite well for diabetes. However, whether it's three meals a day or two meals a day, it's not as important as what you eat. You are what you eat. And we're going to talk about, about it later. Number three, exercise, exercise, and exercise. You need to walk those trails. You need to do these 10,000 steps, which is equivalent to walking about one hour, 20 minutes, or five miles of walking. It burns, again, 300 to 400 kilocalories a day. Number four, you drink plenty of water. Now, somebody asked me earlier during the break, how to drink water. When you get up in the morning, after eight hours without water, you want to drink two cups of water to rehydrate yourself. And after you drink water, you wait for half an hour at least to one hour before you eat. Between meals, you only drink water because water is the only fluid that doesn't stimulate your pancreas, your, your stomach, and your liver to secrete digestive system. I mean, digestive enzymes. Number four, you enjoy sunlight every day. Now, we're lucky to live in Southern California with plenty of sunlight. Sunlight is good for our body, as I said. I didn't say it when we talk about vitamin D. Sunlight converts a precursor on our skin into vitamin D in our body. Vitamin D regulate calcium metabolism, keep our bone healthy. Vitamin D boosts our immune system. Vitamin D sensitizes ourselves to insulin. Therefore, it cuts down insulin resistance. And number four, it's important to sleep at least seven to eight hours a day, certainly, how many hours is, indiv is individual dependent? Some people need more sleep than others. However, for the average people, you want to sleep enough. Seven to eight hours is the norms. 
Sleep deprivation is well known to cause diabetes. Why? When you are under, you, when you are sleep deprived, your stress hormone is elevated, such as cortisol. Cortisol messes up the other endocrine system. Cortisol causes cells to be less sensitive to insulin. Therefore, if you are chronically sleep deprived, you're likely to become diabet diabetic. And number five, it's important to be spiritually, socially, and physically healthy. You set aside time to communicate with God spiritually. Set aside time to communicate with your friends socially, which is important. There are eight principles of food and health. I want you to remember four of these five, I mean four of these eight. Number three, there are virtually no nutrients in animal-based foods that are not better provided by plant. So go vegan. Number four, this is the third time I mentioned about genetic factors. Genes do not determine disease on their own. Genes function only by being activated or expressed. And nutrition plays a critical role in determining which genes, good or bad, be activated or expressed. Number six, the same nutrition that prevents disease in its early stage can also halt or reverse it in its later stage. So don't get discouraged if you have been diabetic for a long time on multiple medications and your blood sugar is still elevated. Switch from medical treatments to lifestyle modification to new start. Number seven, nutrition that is truly beneficial for one chronic disease will support health across the board. If this diet is good for your obesity, it is good for your hypertension. If it's good for your hypertension, it's good for your diabetes. Good for your di diabetes, it's good for your hyperlipidemia. Plant-based diet, relatively healthy. But vegan is the most superior among this plant-based diet. Remember I talk about cow milk, dairy products. Lacto-vegetarian, Mediterranean diet, and DASH diet all have dairy products. Therefore, vegan diet is what you want to have. Now, pescatarians are vegan who also eat fish. Now, don't get me wrong, fish is an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acid, especially the DHA and EPA. It, keep, it is brain health, brain heart healthy. However, our oceans, our rivers are mostly polluted. There is too much mercury in fish. It's kind of unfortunate. But fish is not as healthy as we think. Now, the diet to reverse diabetes, it doesn't mean that you don't have fat at all. At Wima, we teach you not to cook with oil at all. Only get the good fats from eating nuts and beans, etc. And so, you want to reverse diabetes? Stick only to good fat, the omega-3 fatty acid, omega-6 fatty acid, the DHA, the EPA, etc. There's something called omega-9 fatty acid, which your body manufacture. 
uh, itself. Your carbohydrate should be complex instead of simple. So eat wheat bread instead of white bread, whole grain instead of white rice. Rice is well known to lead to contribute to diabetes. Eat a lot of vegetables and fruits every day, legumes. Beans are much better source of protein than red meat. Think about it. The majority, the majority of calorie. of protein in beans come from complex carbohydrates, whereas in red meat, it comes from saturated fat. Now, these are the list of good fats, and these are bad fats. Saturated fat only found in animal food. Now, trans fats used by trans fat actually is vegetable oil, but after the industry pump hydrogens into it, it becomes trans fat. Now what's good about trans fat? It can be stored for a long period of time without decay. It has good economic benefits, but it's detrimental to your body. And our diet should be carbohydrate-based. I mean, the energy. The energy can be from carbohydrate, protein, or fat. You want it to come from carbohydrate, not protein or fat. For those of you on keto diet, anybody on keto diet, I want to remind you one thing. Your brain does not like ketone. It only desires glucose as fuel, and it is very sensitive to hypoglycemia. Now, whole grain, a kernel of wheat, has three layers. The two layers is full of fiber and vitamin. The inner layer is only starch. Fiber wrap around starch and control the rate of conversion to sugar. When you eat your meals, you want your blood sugars to go up, level off, and go down like an aircraft, and not like a, rock, a rocket that goes up and shoots down. So you want to eat complex carbohydrate with fibers and vitamins that control the rate of conversions to sugar. And then you have your protein and, and whole grain, bread, etc. To control the rate of sugar and level off for a period of time during your meal time, and then you want it to come down slowly by putting your fat, your good fat, at the end of your meals. But if you don't, then your blood sugars will shoot up like a rocket. Your pancreas would overreact, secrete too much insulin, and then your blood sugars would come crossing down. It causes hypoglycemia. Now, I want to suggest a trick to get the most out of e eating your vegetable and fruit. Do not waste your brain cells or energies to memorize what fruits and vegetables have, have and how much um, antioxidants, fiber, vitamin, plant proteins, plant carbohydrate, etc. Just eat a variety of them on a daily basis. Also eat a variety of berries, but more blueberries, because blueberries has the best antioxidants. Beans. As I said, beans 
are much better sources of protein than red meats. Besides the carbohydrate, besides the calories coming from complex carbohydrate instead of saturated fat, it lower our cholesterol. Where red meat is the source of cholesterol, it is high in fiber. It keeps us regularly. Whereas red meat causes constipation, the passage of of vegan food is fast. The pa passage of red meat is slow through our gut, our digestive system. In fact, red meat eaters has a high incidence or probability of getting colorectal cancer because of the slow passage. And the toxins staying longer in the gut. If you have a burden for environment, growing beans is environmental, environmentally healthy, whereas raising cattle deplete a lot of the earth's resources. You want your diet to be carbohydrate-based. You want to eat more grain, bread, complex carbohydrate than fruits and vegetable. You want to eat more vegetables and fruits than calcium-rich food, and more of that than protein-rich food, and more protein than omega-3 fatty acids. Those good fats. Remember the. The cause of type two diabetes, that the insulin receptors being sealed off by fat, you minimize minimize fat intake. You need some fat, like good fat, but you don't need a lot. Now the order of food intake, I kind of already touched on it. You want to eat your vegetables and fruits at the beginning of the meal. And not at the end, as we used to do in the past. Because it is okay for insulin to be a little overshoot and high at the beginning of the meal, because we have subse subsequent food for it to work on. But if you eat it at the at the end of the meal, then the insulin, which is overshoot, has no food to work on, and you become hypoglycemic. So in between, you have your protein, your calcium-rich food, your whole grain, high fiber that control the rate of sugar conversion. Now that's the physiology of physiology of di digestion. You put healthy fats in at the end of the meal to prevent rapid drops in blood sugar, prevent hypoglycemia. You're eating more natural, fiber-rich foods helps to stabilize blood sugar level. Now, exercise cannot be overemphasized. If you just do your diet is not enough, the effect is restricted, limited. But if you add exercise, the benefits multiply. We talk about sunshine. So I have already exceeded my time. I'm okay. okay. All right. Now epidemiologic studies is very informative. It help us understand the importance of lifestyle and our health and longevity. Now, the CIA collect all kinds of information all over the world, including the life expectancy all over. The All over the world, a few years ago, this is the report. The ten countries with the best longevity, who live the longest, number one is Monaco, number two is Macau, number three Japan, number four Singapore, number five San Marino, number six Andorra, number seven Guernsey, number eight Hong Kong, number. Nine Australia and number ten Italy. Now, what do these countries have in common? 
they seem, half of them seems to cluster along the Pacific rims and half of them in the Mediterranean region. I was in Europe for two weeks, I mean for two months, and I realized why the Italian, the Portuguese, and the Spanish live longer than the rest of Europe. European counterparts because of their Mediterranean diet. Now this is 2017 reports from CIA. It's about the same, pretty much the same, you know, it's just a couple of, of switches, etc. So we want to learn from people who live the longest. Their lifestyle determine how healthy they are, and how long they live. But we want to learn from the best, not the second best. Now, the National Geographic magazines sent a team of researchers all over the world to try to identify the secrets of living longer in pockets of places. Today, we call them blue zones. Number one is Okinawa, Japan. Number two, Sydney, Italy. And number three, Loma Linda, California. And as I said, I said California, Loma Linda's lifestyle reflects the lifestyle of SDA, Adventists in North America, in the United States, and Canada. And the researchers revisited these places. Um, not long ago, and they find out what we talked about earlier. Okinawa, Japan is no longer number one. Sardinia, Italy is no longer number two. Lomelina, California is the only one persistently, consistently have the quality of life and longevity because our lifestyle remained the same regardless of external forces. Now, epidemiological study is very informative, especially the big one. Adventist mortality study, Adventist health study one, and Adventist health study two involve millions of people. And it is discovered and it is found that Adventist people live especially the vegetarian Adventist, 10 years longer than their Californian counterpart. Vegetarian Adventists had the lowest death rate from coronary artery disease, lower even than the Japanese living in Japan. Now, the Japanese, Japanese migration is pretty, pretty informative. Japanese who live in Japan live the longest, has the lowest rate of coronary artery disease. When they move to Hawaii, the, the incidence of coronary artery disease go up, the longevity goes down. When they move from Hawaii to California or the, to the mainland, it becomes worse because they become Americanized more as they move east to the mainland. Now, as you can see, vegetarian Adventists compared to Japanese in Japan, Japanese in California, non-vegetarian Adventists, and Californians. So the open secret of longevity in SDA community includes, which is uniquely Adventist, healthy lifestyle integral with the Bible. Nurture emotional and spiritual health, value family relationship, price volunteering. Now, how does volunteering improve or add years to our life? Volunteering is a form of sharing. Sharing is a source of happiness and emotional as well as physical well-being that adds to quality of life 
and longevity. It is the little acts of kindness and sharing that we do on a daily basis that add meaning to our life. Our goals of reversing type 2 diabetes as well as preventing cardiovascular disease is to improve our quality of life and add years to our life. 